This could change everything. Jesus, that willingly gave his life on Calvary's cross 
and pay the penalty that we owe, Father, that we could have to give to eternal life. We pray these things in Jesus' sweet, precious, holy name.
says, I want to hurt this hand before by this very knowledge. Oh, this is it.
Well, good morning, church. I hope you are doing well today. <coughs> Anybody have any hardship this past week? Any difficulty in your week? Anybody have any tough time this past week? Raise your hand. Life does it, doesn't it? Okay, I was with four different people that I kind of had charge over at different times this week. Uh, but these various ones, I, I tried to encourage and, and uh, help each one. Uh, one with losing a job, one with facing a terminal illness, and two with family issues that uh, we just tried to have to work through. Uh, along with some of you, I attended a funeral this week as well. Had a conversation with others about uh, very difficult things in life. Uh, if you, uh, uh, if you know anything, you know this one thing, and that is life is difficult often. Uh, life is tough at times, okay? And uh, I just want to share this with you before I get started. So this is not the sermon, so don't start with your clock yet, okay? <laughs> but as I was looking at uh, part of the Sermon on the Mount this week, and I got to the end of it, there's an interesting uh, thought that I want to share with you. Now I want to pray, and I want to look at a very unique subject, a difficult subject here in a moment. But Jesus, as he wraps up this Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 7, he says, he says this, he says, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine, and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the uh, streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears the words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house and fell with a great crash. The one thing that reveals your foundation is the storm. And everybody faces it. I don't know what storm you're facing today or what you face, but the storm will reveal how what you built your house upon. If you hear these words of mine, Jesus says, and puts them into practice. That you will withstand me. I want you to pray before we start. Father, I thank you for your church. I thank you, Father, for the great promise that comes straight from you. That, Lord, in the midst of all of life and all that it has to offer us and all that it throws at us oftentimes, that, Lord, if we would simply take your words and do more than just hear them, as James says, but as Jesus says also, it puts them into practice then we will have that foundation, that rock-solid foundation that we sang of a few moments ago, you being our cornerstone. Lord, that when the rains come and the streams rise and the floodwaters, everything beats the us. Lord, we will be able to stand because we have trusted you for all things and we put into practice the faith that our mouths proclaim. And so Lord, I thank you for that promise, and I pray this promise, Lord, over your church, Lord, because starting again tomorrow, and maybe even after this service today, Lord, we're going to have to face some of the very same things that life throws our way. Be with us now, Lord, as we look at your word, and for your church's strength today, I ask you to bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have a Bible with you, I encourage you to open up to the book of Proverbs. I have a lot to cover, so we've got to get going. And so if I have to talk fast, you need to listen fast. And so I hope you have a Bible with you. I was talking to a pastor in the this past week that in this day of digital uh, Bibles, you know, I have a Bible on my phone up here, and I have a Bible on my iPad, a Bible on my computer. A lot of times people bring them into the worship services, and that's fine. That's wonderful. However many of you read the scriptures, great. But one of the things he told me he, uh, he missed was hearing the pages turn. When he asked people to turn in their Bible in the church to some places, we're going to turn to a few pages today. I hope I hear your pages turn, okay? Um, we go to the book of Proverbs. I want to talk to you about a difficult subject, okay? I'm going to go ahead and swore again. It's a difficult subject because the uh, recipient of this subject needs to be you, okay? It doesn't need to be anyone else. You don't need to be thinking, again, of, of anybody else that says, man, I wish they were here to hear this, but they're not here today. They're gone on the holiday weekend. You just need to kind of draw that little three foot circle around you, okay, and close out everybody else. I'm, I'm going to have warned you, okay, that's a difficult subject. I'm going to call, call you to a challenge, okay? So I don't want to finish you today, but I don't want to back away from the Word of God. The Bible tells me if I'm going to preach, I have to preach everything, correct? Amen. But here in about the nine month mark of the year, 
which also represents about the nine-month mark where you are without a permanent full-time senior pastor, okay, I am your interim pastor, then I'm sure that since you are human like I am, your mind begins to wander a little bit. Your, your, your questions are going, what's going on? When's it going to happen? How's it going to be? And oftentimes, because we are each uh, in this room, if we're willing to confess this, we are woefully human. Not only do our minds begin to wander, but then something else begins to happen. We can begin to talk, okay? We can begin to ask questions. And sometimes it can go down a path that does not need to go down. You know what I'm saying? Listen, it, it's happened for all time. When Moses spent too much time up on the mountain, it began to happen to God's people then. It can happen to us today. We need to recognize that, and we need to be on guard for it. So today's message is really for the church. If you come into God's house today and you're not even claiming to be a Christian today, guess what? This is free for you. You need to listen to me address the church, okay? Now, I believe there's a word in it for you, but this is really for God's people, okay? And it's meant to not only challenge each of us today, but hopefully to encourage us, all right? But I want us to talk about a sin that we oftentimes don't talk about in church, okay? We like to talk about the big ones, okay? As we look at our society, as we look at our community, and we see that everything's being allowed and promoted out there, we like to talk about those, and we want to come out against it, come out hard against it, and I'm all for coming out against sin, you know, but we need to talk about one that sometimes is in the house, you know what I mean? Not something that belongs to someone else out there that's ugly and vile and perverse and all that, but something that is equally as vile and ugly and perverse in God's eyes. Are you ready for the sin? It's the sin of gossip. Okay? It's what can happen to us when we begin to allow this little thing that James warns us about in the New Testament called the tongue begin to work against us. Now, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand about who is guilty of gossip. Because if anybody didn't raise your hand at that point, I might have to come to you and say, okay, we need to talk after the service. Every one of us is guilty. Okay? Gentlemen, can I get your attention for a moment? Sometimes you, us men, are the worst. So this is not a message for women. Okay, guys? So ladies, make sure your man is listening up, okay? Because we all need this. Okay? Now, I'm going to read you three verses that are in three different locations in Proverbs. Just keep your seat today, if you will. And I want you to look at these three verses. This is going to be uh, the, the launching pad for us this morning. The first one is found in Proverbs chapter 20. All right? These are in no particular order, but I'm just going to read them in the order that I have them today. Proverbs chapter 20. Look at verse number 19. It says, A gossip betrays a confidence. So avoid a man who talks too much. Maybe this is why the Lord looks for me at the house. She knows I'm a talker. You know? The Bible says, I'm kidding about that. The Bible says that a gossip betrays confidence, so avoid a man who talks too much. In other words, never confide in, do not associate with a, 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 a bad word, a gossip, or even a black mouth. Go back to Proverbs 11, if you will. Proverbs 11, and verse number 13. And again, we read these words. A gossip betrays a confidence, but a trustworthy man keeps a secret. Is it ever hard to keep a secret? A trustworthy man keeps a secret. Go back to chapter 10, one more page back, maybe in verse number 14. This does not use the word gossip, but it, it, it stays in the same subject. Wise men, Proverbs 10, 14. Wise men store up knowledge, but the mouth of a fool invites <coughs> ruin. Listen, I know this is a difficult subject to talk about, especially when I say you are the recipient, not somebody else, okay? So I don't, I don't want to stir up a fight with you or make you mad at me, but again, this is something we need to be very careful of. This is something that we need to be on guard for, especially in the church, especially when we think about such things as unity and harmony and what kind of testimony we give to a community that is watching. And a community has the right to watch a church that says we proclaim to follow the one true God. And so especially in times where you're without a pastor, where you're without certain leadership, and yes, you have inner leadership, and you have other leaders uh, in, your, uh, in the body. But in times like that, it just seems like 
this sin, if we're not careful, can creep up on us and do the damage that it does. Now, let me give you a very simple definition of gossip, okay? Let me give you a very simple definition. It is simply this. Talking about someone who is not present at the time. Have you ever done that? Talking about someone, okay, who is not present at the time. Here are some common ways that that conversation begins, okay? We begin to, I'll just, I'll use Lori's name, I'll use anybody else's name, okay? Just for, for sake of illustration. Between you and me. Have you been watching Lori? Have you heard what Lori's been talking about? It always begins with between you and me. Okay? That's one way it starts. Here's another way it starts. You ready for this? Because we can, we were very clever in disguising our gossip. Okay? We are. We're very clever in disguising our gossip. It may say something like this. You know what, Mike? I'm very concerned about Lord. <laughs> we'll go to <coughs> Right? Why would you talk to me? Alright? I'm very concerned about Lord. Here's another way it starts. Okay? You ready for this? I'm telling you this, Mike, because you need to know. Do I really need to know these things? That's the question to ask. Here's another one of my favorite ones. Okay? Let's play fill in the blank. And I guarantee you that, I guarantee you, everybody's going to be able to fill in the blank. Maybe we're, we're about to play. Here we go. I'm not supposed to tell you this. Y'all heard that. <laughs> Sounds like you've used it. You know? <laughs> I'm not supposed to tell you this. But, and in other words, I'm about to do something that I just said is wrong. I know it's wrong, but I'm about to do it anyway. One of the things I love to do when we introduce new companies in the work that we do is we do orientations for this company and tell them what's, what's, it, what's it going to be like to have a chaplain in your company. And I love to talk to them about this issue of confidentiality, okay? Because we promise everybody we serve in our work 100% confidentiality, ex with exceptions of three things that are legal, binding things. You know, life endangerment, child abuse, and whatnot, okay? We promise some confidentiality. And one of the things I love to tell them is this. Listen to me. When somebody comes to you, when somebody comes to you and says, I'm not supposed to tell you this about Lori, but they will do it to you when they are talking to Lori. They will look at Lori and say, I'm not supposed to tell you this about Jim, but they will do that back to you. That's how much people disregard confidentiality. They disregard keeping a secret. They do not have a problem with betraying the confidence. They talk too much. Even if part of the conversation is laced with some kind of truth, it is also an enticement to be critical as we evaluate other people and we create these conclusions about people that we should never have done. It always begins with chit-chat. It's filled with subjectivity. There's just enough share there to leave an impression, if you will. It quickly turns slanderous and destructive if we're not careful. Well, the other things about it is, is that we often rationalize it with prayer. You know, some of the ways that we're clever and hiding and say, well, I want you to be praying for the Lord. Well, how should I be praying for the Lord? And then we tell them all these things that really never needs to be known. You know what I'm saying? It just does not need to be known, but we cloud it and shroud it in prayer. It's deadly to a church. Gospel is deadly to marriage. It is deadly to friends. And it's so easy, isn't it? If we're honest, it's easy to get caught up in it. Okay, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about gossip, and then I'm going to tell you how to take care of it. Fair enough? I'm going to tell you how to take care of it today. All right? In love, in that way. Sometimes, you know, go back and give you a uh, way back to the book of Leviticus. This began uh, all the way back in the law, okay? In you know, Leviticus chapter 19, in the original law given to us by God, Leviticus 19, verse 16 says, Do not go about spreading slander among your people. Don't gossip. Don't slander. When you say, well, I'm not supposed to pay this much, well, then don't tell them not. Just keep it right to yourself. It needs things to stay right there at that moment. I love to tell people when we do those orientations about confidentiality, I look and I say, your story deserves to be told. 
by you, when you are led to tell about by me. So when you tell me something and I'm, I'm serving you in, in, in our world, I'll let them know I am a dead end street. I am that ship that goes out to sea that never comes back to port. And that's what I'll do with your story. Let me share with you a couple things about gospel. You can write these verses down and you can go back and look at them later if you don't have time to look at them. And I'll tell you again how to take care of them. First of all, you need to understand this. When we began to hear people talk like this, all right, gospels cannot be trusted. That's what the scripture says. We just read it back in Proverbs 11, and verse 13, where it says a trustworthy man keeps a secret. In uh, Proverbs 10, 14, it says, Wise and sore mouth with the mouth of a fool invites ruin. A gospel traits uh, confidence. They cannot be trusted. Something goes in one ear and then out their mouth is what they do. We don't need to be like that. Okay, there's no other really phenomenal, great, epic way of saying that except stop it. Right? We just don't need to be like that. You cannot trust someone who is a gospel. The same thing I would tell you about gospel today is gospelers destroy friendships. Gospelers destroy friendships. In, uh, in Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 28, it says this, a perverse man stirs up dissension and a gossip separates close friends. Have you ever lost a close friend over this? Have you ever seen people's friendships do like that because of gossip? It's painful. It divides people. There are times, you know, when you think about things like that, and they, you know, the old saying that it's simply not true, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. There are times when you'd rather take a stick or a stone to the head, wouldn't you, than a word to the heart. Because that's just, you, you, you're going to heal from the bruise that comes from the stick. But sometimes those words are so devastating that as a friendship separates and it's destroyed, it may never come back. Which is very, very sad. Number three, gospels cannot keep a secret. We've already read that as well. Proverbs 20, 19, avoid the sin. A rumor, have you ever heard this phrase? I love this. A rumor is about as hard to unspread as butter. Once it's out there, you're not getting it back. Okay? And it's like that other old saying, uh, a lie will travel halfway around the world while the truth is still putting its shoes on. Okay? You can't catch up to a rumor. Okay, that rumor is out there, and all of a sudden, because a rumor that has been created, someone's reputation is now tarnished, possibly destroyed, and this seems to be the way of our country today. This seems to be the way of our country, not only nationally, but also individually very close in our churches and in our homes. If we're not careful, we can ruin someone's life immediately. Here's another truth about gossip that you need to understand, and that is they cause strife wherever they go. Gossipers and gossip causes strife wherever it is found. In Proverbs chapter 26 and verse number 20, this is what it says, Without wood, a fire goes out. Pretty deep, isn't it? Solomon, the wisest man ever, writing all this stuff too. It's like, man, I knew that. But wood, but without wood, a fire goes out. And without gossip, a quarrel dies down or strife ceases. I mean, this is just common sense, isn't it? If we want to maintain a unity, you want to maintain a harmony, you want to keep things moving forward, even at month number nine, while you're in the midst of uncertainty, looking towards your future, then pull back from things that just don't need to be. Don't, don't cause any more strife by adding wood to the fire, keeping that fire fed, poking it, stoking it, and beating it with more fuel. If you'll back away, these things just seem to die down, don't they? And we live in great, great harmony. But listen to this. God will judge gospels harshly. God will judge this sin harshly. We like to look at certain sins again and we look at and see in, in view of our society and we say those folks will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Those folks will be judged harshly. Listen, God will do the very same thing with gospels. Go back to Psalm 101, if you will. In Psalm 101, just 
pick up at verse 4. You can look at the first three, but uh, pick up at verse 4. It says, Men of perverse heart shall be far from me. I will have nothing to do with evil. Whoever slanders his neighbor in secret, him will I put to silence. God will <coughs> silence the gospel. God will silence the gossiper. God will silence the slanderer. God will silence whoever has all the eyes and a proud heart. Him will I not endure. Okay? Whoever slanders his neighbor, I will put into silence. There's something else you need to know about uh, gossip, especially as we might like to compare sin and say, well, some sin is greater than the other sin. Gossip is unrighteous and it represents a depraved mind. Go to Romans chapter 1 with me for just a moment. Romans chapter 1. In Romans 1, beginning in verse number 28, we're going to see a list and see if gossip is in this list. Okay? Romans 1, beginning in verse 28. It says, Furthermore, since they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, He gave them over to a depraved mind to do what ought not to be done. They have become filled, the Bible says, with every kind of wickedness. Every kind of wickedness. And here comes the list. Evil, greed, and depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossips, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. They disobey their parents. They are senseless, faithless, heartless, ruthless. Although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death, they not only continue to do these very things, but also approve of those who practice. That's right. That's heavy. Okay, that's, that's heavy. Because again, in that list is gossip and slander, and although they know God's righteous decree is that those who do these things deserve death, they not only continue to do these very things, but they also prove those who practice them. That's heaven. And we need to deal with that because it, this is such a, a sneaky sin. It comes in so easily. And when we, even when we're trying to be careful about it, it can blindside us and ambush us. And, 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 and before we know it, we are knee deep in the middle of it, not only listening, but then offering our own commentary right back to it. I know because I've been there. It's human. We want to feel important. We want to share information to make us look like we're powerful because we have all the information. And then as we share that again and we take it and share it with someone else, it makes us feel... And listen, it's a human nature thing that we want to do these things. You know, gospelers and other things Scripture says, they have too much time on their hands. <laughs> Gospels have too much time on their hands. The Bible says, 1 Timothy, go back there if you want to, 1 Timothy chapter 5. In verse 13, it says, Besides, they get into the habit of being idle and going about from house to house, and not only do they become idlers, but also gossips and busy bodies saying things they ought not to. I love what Paul says to Timothy. It's very clear. Same things they ought not to. Why? Because they have so much time on their hands. Listen, busy people don't have time to be busy bodies. Now listen, I know at this point you're thinking, wow, why can't you come out of nowhere with this whole gossip thing? You, you kind of hit a square between the eyes with this thing. Right? I don't want to be thought of like that. Okay, I don't want to be thought of as, as a person that's is just coming down hard on things. This is the scripture, correct? Amen. This is what the Bible warns us about. And again, because people, and that's us, we are prone to certain things, especially in times of uncertainty. Okay, especially when we wonder, when is this going to happen? How is it going to happen? Who is it going to be? What's it going to look like? All of a sudden, we can begin to wonder out loud and talk in ways and begin to question and wonder about the search team here. Why aren't the deacons doing this? How about my Sunday school teacher? How can, you know, what about Mike? What's he doing? How about Luis? What's going on? And before we know it, we're not careful. Just because we're a little inquisitive, we can take in a hard right or a hard left and we can be off the path of hard. So let me give you this. How do you respond to gossip? Okay, this is going to be worth your trip today, okay? How do you respond to gossip? Let me give you a couple quick things and then we'll 
be done. Number one, you need to deal with gossip directly. In other words, you ready for this? This is so deep. Don't do it. <laughs> You're like, right, you studied all week, and that's the best you got? Yeah. <laughs> Don't do it. Deal with it directly, okay? In other words, you need to say, I'm not interested. And walk away. Amen. You say, why well, isn't that rude? Which would you rather be? Would you rather be all that we just read about and be coming under the judgment of God then? Or would you rather appear to be rude? Okay? I'm not, I'm not encouraging anybody to be rude now. Okay? Don't, don't misunderstand me. All right? Because you can't lose a friendship. Or I can tell you about that. When you kind of get up and part ways from a, from a friend when they're doing something that you were doing and all of a sudden you realize, wow, I need to be gone from this, you can lose a friend. It's happened. All right? It's happened to us, and it will happen to you. But you need to, at the very beginning, say, how do I respond to God? Okay, build it directly. I am not interested. I don't want to know. I'm out. Okay? Stop. I'm out. I'm done. Whatever it takes at that point. Now, here's the second thing I'll tell you, okay? Now, again, this is not necessarily easy, but again, it's worth the trip that you, you know these things. Number two, confront the gossip firm. Confront them about the damage that's being done. Okay? And possibly even as you confront the gossiper, offer to go to that person that you're talking about. Or that they bring up, they look at me and say, you know what, Mike, have you heard this about Lori? I'm like, no time out, I haven't. But, you know, before we go any further, well, let's go see Lori. Amen. Let's, let's just go. Okay? In fact, I don't have to go. Then we, I don't have to go yet. The Bible says you need to. Okay? And if you're not worried, if you, if you haven't worked it out, then, then maybe I'll go with you. But instead, just confront them and say, look, this is going to be damaging. If she's not present, okay, then this is going to be damaging. More, and not just to her, but to the entire body. You see, it's a poison that goes out. It's a poison that slowly ripples on out and will touch everybody at some point. Deal with it directly. Don't do it. Confront the gospel. Gossiper, okay? Offer go with that person. And then, number three, clarify. Clarify. In other words, ask those clarifying questions. How do you know this? Okay? How do you know this? Where did you hear it? Well, people are saying, okay, who is people? Well, I can't give you their names. Well, then they don't count. Seriously. Again, I'm not trying to be rude, but if you're going to look at me and say, well, people are saying this about this, okay, look, bring the people with you. Bring the people forward, bring the people up, let everybody know if that's the case. You know who people usually are? If someone comes to me and says, my people are saying, you know who the people usually are? That one person right in front of me. Okay? And again, I'm not trying to stir anything up, I'm not, and I'm not trying to be rude myself, but we have to, how do you treat sin, how do you treat all this other sin in your life? You have to treat it very decidedly. You have to treat it very, as a matter of fact, you cannot tiptoe around sin, play with it like a cat with a mouse or whatever. You have to deal with it right there. If you want it out, and you want that unity and harmony to prevail in your body, then you must deal with it right away. Another thing you have to do, or you ready for this and this you have to trust one another. And you know what? Because here's the thing, we are all sinners and we're all prone to do things we should not do, even gossip, okay? Now, if I'm gossiping and Ken hears me, he needs to approach me like I just said, and guess what I need to do? I need to trust him. I need to trust the fact that He loves me. I need to trust the fact that He's a brother in Christ with me. And that I just got out of line a little bit, and He said, hey, Mike, bring it back in. And I have to trust Him. It's this question, and Lori and I were talking on the way down about this. She goes, Mike, is that another one of your questions that you ask people? You know, I've told y'all this before. I look at people all the time and say, do you trust my heart? Okay? We need to trust one another's heart. You say, well, Mike, if I, if I call somebody out for gossip, they're not going to like me. Well, if you're in the body of Christ, we need to go over that and trust one another, right? Now, it might sting you 
Okay, no one likes to get caught in something or busted or whatever you want to call it. But you know what? Once you know that initial sting, you say, you know what? I, I, I trust you. He brought that up because he loves me. He brought that up because he loves his church. He brought this up because he loves Lori. Okay? <coughs> she didn't know she was going to be the brother of all this today. Um, you know? <coughs> he, just, he brought this up because everybody involved needs to know that they are loved and that we are family and that Satan would want to destroy everything that's going on in the body of Christ. Yesterday, Stephen and my son, thank y'all again for praying for him. Thank y'all for being so generous to him. He leaves Friday. He, uh, if you were here the night that he did his music, you saw our camera up here on the front, and, uh, uh, I, and I videoed it one night, and there were several videos in it, okay, because it breaks it down in videos. And he came to me and said, Dad, I haven't seen the videos. Uh, where do you have them? And I pulled out the little disc from the camera. I said, there you go, right there. And he went and put it in his computer. And we got to talking. I think we talked with my dad last night out at the golf course about it. And some, somehow it came up about part of me. And Stephen said, man, they sang loud. That's a compliment, by the way. You know? He said, man, because they were singing loud this morning. But he said, man, they sang loud. You know, and I've told people this before. I've told John Wayne, and he and I have talked. I've told others, you know, as you're looking for a pastor, okay? Y'all want to know what I've told people individually? There's going to be a pastor who's going to be lucky. Now, again, that's just a word we use in America to find his church when God wants him. That's the kind of spirit that's here. That's the kind of unity that's here. That's the kind of harmony that's here. The generosity that's here. I watched your generosity before you ever got to my son with your youth and all the children and all the things there. Your generosity, even with the shoeboxes and everything else, it blows me away. You're, you, you have a harmony. You have a love. You have a spirit. You have a mission. You have a desire. You have all these things. Tell me Satan does not want to ruin that. Satan wants to destroy that. And as you go a little bit along and you wonder, I haven't heard anything, I haven't seen anything, I don't know what's going on. Instead of going out there and injecting a, a creative question that makes everybody go, yeah, you don't know, wonder about that. Why don't we just do this? Why don't we just go, God? I don't need to know all this right now. I don't need to know all this right now because you are on your throne, you are in control. This team, they are working, they are praying, they are looking, they are searching, they are examining and getting wisdom, discernment. Lord, I don't know what's taking the youth this long on that on that piece. You know what, God, I trust you. We sang that to you this morning too. Lord, I trust you. I believe that you have things in control. Anybody not trust God today? That's what I thought. That's the right church answer to give. Sometimes when we walk out, it begins to hit us. And we demonstrate something different in our lives. The sad thing is, is that when we begin to think and talk like this, is that it turns into things like gossip if we're not careful. And you say, well, Mike, what are you hearing? I'm not hearing anything. Don't be alarmed. Please don't be alarmed. But here's what I want to do. I want to sometimes, you know, it's kind of like preventive maintenance. If you wait until your vehicle has to be serviced, you're going to pay a lot more for it. But if you'll do preventive maintenance along the way, you know, that thing's going to last you a lot longer. It's going to go slower. Everything's going to be good. I just want to make sure that sometimes we keep things in front of us as a church that we need to. That we can't just let go because sometimes you think, well, I'll just let that go. It can slip right in under the radar. It is not even. So let's be praying for our search team. Let's be praying for our personnel team and our youth. Let's be praying for our deacons. Let's be lifting up our Sunday school teachers. Let's be lifting up the staff. Everybody that's there, Luis, as he's here, Debbie, and others as they serve during the week, day in and day out. Let's be lifting up one another. Let's be letting each other know how much we're praying for them, how important you are to me. He said, Lord, what are you doing? I haven't heard anything from you. Come on, tell me. You know, and just, hey, I love you. I'm praying for you. How can I serve you? Instead of going down the roads that are just we're prone to as he is. Let's pray together. And we'll offer an invitation. Father, we thank you. 
today, Lord, that we can trust you for all things. Lord, you are fully on your throne. You are fully in control of all things. You are sovereign. Lord, nothing catches you unaware. Nothing ever dawns over you. You've never said anything like, whoops, I didn't see that coming, or uh-oh. Lord, that none of that language exists in you because, Father, you know all things. You see the, the end from the beginning. You see it all. And, Lord, you are orchestrating everything according to your perfect will. Lord, we, we say things like that in church, and we know it to be true, and we believe that. But, Lord, there are times where we get a little sideways as human beings, and we begin to wander out loud. And, Lord, it doesn't come out in ways that says things like, well, I, I, don't, I wonder if God knows what he's doing. No, Lord, there's usually a, a, a human name attached to that. And we begin to, to talk and wonder. Lord, your church is so precious to you. You died for it. Lord, you love your church so much, Lord. And I know everybody in this room does the same. Too. We love our church. We love all that you do. So, Lord, I, I pray that today you would protect us from ourselves. Lord, that you protect us from the enemy, that, that the enemy that would come in and, and begin to plant thoughts into our minds that we don't need to be considering. Lord, that we can know that, and we can do exactly what the Scripture says, and take those thoughts captive and subject them to the obedience of the Word. And Father, when we see them not be consistent with what you told us, we can discard it and say that thought does not even need to be considered anymore. Much less talk to that. Because, Lord, your church is at stake. The body of Christ is not only precious, but, Lord, this community in which it exists is precious to you. And this community called you follow the surrounding areas of, of Barber County, Father, they need a harmonious, loving, spirit-filled, unified witness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, so much is at stake here. The watching world needs to see body of Christ be body as you're called to be. So Lord, if, if there's any way in any of us right now that is not in alignment with your will, how we think, how we talk, Lord, may you deal with us now and may we respond to you obediently. Father, we may need to repent today. I don't know about each person in this room right now. Father, we may, we may just need to come to you and say, Father, I repent. I change my mind. I turn away from that sin. And Lord, I trust you and I love you. I thank you for giving me such a great church to be a part of. Lord, there might be somebody in the room today that needs to get saved. They may have heard this day and say, I, 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 need to, I need to trust God today with my life. I need to ask him to forgive of sin. I need to repent. I need to believe on the name of Jesus and be saved today. Lord, would you save that individual today? that does not know you, that has not walked with you, that may have heard of your name in the church, no church of faith, but never had a relationship with you. Lord, would you do that today? And Lord, maybe we just need to be praying for one another, our teams, lifting each other up, loving each other as we should. Lord, in this invitation as we sing, I just pray that you'll have your way with our heart, Lord, that we will allow you to have your way with us as we seek your face and your heart on this matter. It's in Jesus' name. Stand. We're going to sing, and all that said, I'm going to shut up now. I'm going to ask you to just listen to God, okay? If you need to come pray with me, I'll be happy to pray with you. If you need to be saved today, I'd love to pray with you to, to lead you to the Savior and die for your sins. If you need to pray with somebody or have an altar, this invitation is just a little time for you to do business with God.
I know one day I'll be reunited in heaven with Claire. Thank you. Amen. 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 Amen.
17. All right, just read Proverbs 17. Hopefully that will entice you to come back to me, okay? I love the book of Proverbs. I study in it a lot. It's just a great book. So, uh, if you come back tonight, even though it's holiday weekend, you don't want to miss me with God's people uh, and worship him. We're also going to pray for Rick because he's leaving for Texas this afternoon for safety. Uh, and so uh, we're going to do that. And there's some of the other things we need to be praying about, okay? But that's one thing that we need to pray for as we go. And I trust you'll have a great day. Keep your church family in prayer, all right? Everybody from the leadership to your partner next to you, uh, everyone around you, okay? Let's pray as we go. Father, we thank you for your word today. And Lord, sometimes it's difficult to deal with things that uh, hit close to home. Lord, that's uh, things that, uh, like gossip, that we can very easily, if we're not careful, be caught up in each and every day. Because, Lord, the, the enemy we uh, battle against is very cunning and very crafty. And, Lord, uh, before we know it, we can be right in the midst of that. So, Lord, keep us vigilant on such things for the sake of the body, for the sake of our unity, uh, and how we show the love of Christ to the community as we love one another. Lord, for Ricky today, we pray for safety. Security. Father, build a hedge of protection around him as he travels, Lord. Keep him safe. Uh, Lord, for others, uh, like Kathy Wilson, they Lord, and her family, pray you continue to build a hedge of protection around them as they have said goodbye to Mark. Lord, I know it's a very, very dark, difficult time today. Father, as we looked at uh, the Sermon on the Mount, Lord, uh, the winds and the Rains are blowing hard against that family right now. Streams are rising, floodwaters are, are crashing against them. But Lord, I know that they're a great family of faith. So Lord, I pray that you'll strengthen them in a very difficult time uh, today. Lord, for so many others, uh, thank you again, Lord, for the goodness of your church, the generosity of everybody. Uh, Lord, even as Stephen prepares to, to, to head off to China, Lord, I pray your blessings on them and may your word prevail there. Lord. Many get saved. Many will give their life to Jesus. Many Christians that are there that are in difficult places, may they be strengthened and encouraged and blessed uh, as well. So many things to pray for. Lord, your search team, the leadership, the deacons, uh, our youth uh, that are still looking for leadership as well. May you have your way, Father. You keep us encouraged with your Holy Spirit, Father. We ask you to do that as we know you will. And we look forward to how you're going to act in every one of these situations. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.